guys in the fast lane here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fit piston rings into the cylinder and measure the end gap and file it down. Now, this is just going to be a brief overview while I got this head off of this GSR right now. So, let's get to it. Now, these are NPR Nippon Racing rings and they're OEM size 81 millimeter. Now, I honed out my cylinders a couple of times so it's not going to be right on spec but the first ring it has it numbered <clears throat> the blue second ring the oiling rings and your compression ring right here which is the red first it's pretty simple now on my last video I showed how to install uh, the rings on the piston without a tool on uh, this video I'm going to be using a tool but uh, I'm actually just going to put the piston rings on there. I'll show you that later. Um, so pretty much with this <clears throat> on the back of the box, I had a comment on one of my last videos saying that the dip in the second ring, there's like a little gash. And uh, let me show you that. If you can see right here, there's a letter N. Okay. And it clearly states here, <clears throat> if I can find it, let's see. Uh, here we go. If you can read this. Take care to fit the rings with marked faces upward and towards or top of the piston. Okay? <clears throat> now, marked faces means a letter. So, that's the end. They're all ends. Now, another person commented and said that that's wrong. That these little indentations. And if you can see them clearly, there's a step right there. See that? Okay, now there's no reason for that step to be upward because it's not scraping oil up, it's scraping oil down. Every time the piston goes up, it wants to pull the oil back down. So that's a little deposit so it catches the oil. So the reason you always want to pay attention to the marked face, the letter N, I've always put them on top. If it has a letter, it's going to be on the top. It's going to go upward not upside down. Now for this application it says anywhere from 14 to I believe 16 or 18 thousandths of an inch for the compression ring, the first ring. So I'm going to take one of these compression rings out which this is the first one right here and I'm going to set it down in the cylinder with the end facing up and I'm going to squeeze just a little bit and we're going to get it in there without hurting it now that we got it just sitting in there, we're going to take our piston, any piston will do, and we're going to go down a couple inches. So we're going to put the piston in the cylinder, and we're going to shove it down evenly. You want to go evenly, you don't want to go crooked. There we go. Just like that. Now we're going to take our feeler gauge, and we're going to go... Just roughly find, uh, I'm going to start off with 19 thousandths because uh, I've honed it out quite a few times. And we're going to stick it between the groove. So we're going to take it, it's going to be closed off like this, and we're going to put it between the groove in the cylinder and see where it is. So I take this and I slide it between the groove and 19 thousandths won't fit in there. So that's good. So here's what we're going to do. We take the 19 thousandths. And we just try to slide it in that groove right there. And it won't go in. So we're just going to keep going down until we find the right feeler gauge. And that will tell us how thick it is. Let's say you put your ring in the cylinder and it's off or you need to make it a bigger gap. So all you do is you get yourself a ring file tool. This one came from a company called Speedway. It was roughly $43. <clears throat> you can get them on eBay. Comes with a diamond blade and a real nice arm. So you're obviously going to have to swing it off the desk just a little bit so you can spin it. It's going to hang like this. It has a mounting bracket. You can actually bolt it to a wooden desk or whatever. And you take your ring and you put it in front like this. And what you do is you, as you're pushing, you pinch it together. Now you want it to be flat. You don't want you don't want your rings being at an angle, cut at an angle. You want them to be, when you close them together, you want them to come together just like that, nice and flat. 
If you V them, you're going to have gap again, and that's not what you want. So what you do is you push it all the way up to these two little spinner jobbies, and you push it in, and you get it flat. Now you flatten it out, and then you start spinning the ring cutter, and it will cut the ring to where you need it. You go a little at a time, and before you put it back in the cylinder, always take out a piece of fine grit sandpaper and kind of sand the edge is smooth you don't want any burrs going in your cylinder because if you scratch it you're going to be in trouble so make sure you sand off all the burrs make it nice and smooth then slide it in the cylinder recheck it again if it needs a little more grinding put it back on here grind it again and that's how you gap your rings another quick tip make sure you clean all of your crevices on your pistons you know you don't want to get any corrosion in there because in the ring won't uh, go all the way in and it'll prematurely wear the piston ring on the cylinder wall and that's no good you'll be ripping the whole engine apart again so <clears throat> in between the ringlands you can get yourself a feeler gauge this is 35 thousandths right here I think that's as big as it goes on this and you just stick it in there and you kind of run it back and forth and if you look on the counter I just dropped some uh, some carbon build up so just do that rinse it with some water another quick tip would be to take some steel wool right here on each side where the piston the wall kind of meets every once in a while uh, just get some steel wool and don't rub it too much but just rub it so it's smooth just smooth it out and then take a little bit of steel wool and just go back and forth until you get some of the residue off. You can clean your pistons with steel wool. Make sure you wash it off really good and clean each oil port hole. You don't want any any kind of blockage because that's what oils your rings and stuff. Now one more quick tip. Get some brake cleaner, <clears throat> carb choke cleaner, same stuff, advanced. Believe it or not, carb choke cleaner right now is uh, two for five bucks at advanced. So it's cheaper than uh, brake cleaner. It's the same thing pretty much. Um, Pretty much you can take the straw <clears throat> on the can and if it, it'll slide right through there. So as you can see it's coming out the back side of the piston. So that's how you clean it. If you can't get the straw through there on at least B-series then you know it's clogged up. So just keep going back and forth, spray it out with the carb cleaner or brake cleaner and uh, you should be good to go. Make sure you spray all in the ringlands and everything and then you'll be able to put the rings on. If you're saying, well, I don't have a feeler gauge, um, you really need one uh, to pretty much do the job. But if you need to just clean the ringlands, you can use an old ring, kind of bend it back a little bit, like that, and then just kind of stick it in the groove and run it around. It actually works a little bit better than the feeler gauge because it's actually the same width as the uh, ringland. So it'll clean it out really nice. For this video, I'm going to use a ring compressor. And this is a second ring. And as you can see, you got the letter on top, N. So I got the oiling ring on there. If you want to see how to put the oiling ring on and other rings by hand, I have a video on how to install piston rings with no tool. Uh, a lot of people will argue it and say that it's improper, but uh, I've installed dozens of engine builds by doing it by hand but for this video and just for the heck of it I went out and bought a a ring tool so pretty much you just get the ring tool like this it has little grooves where the ring sits in it and then it spreads the ring so we got our letter on top you just set it in there like that I'm just gonna put my finger on the back just for security and I'll tell you what though man I sure as heck uh, open these a lot more than I would manually doing them. Manually, I barely even twist them or anything. And they seem to be spaced more. So, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. So that's done. And I'm going to clock it. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Here's how it is. B is the number one top compression ring. A is the second one. D is the, I believe, the middle ring, and C is the two little rings on the bottom. These two little rings right here, one up top and two, the oiling rings, that's C. D is the middle one. You got uh, B is this one, and A is the 
I don't know why they did that, but hey, that's the way they got it. So let's get started. We got the arrow right here facing towards the right and the arrow right here facing towards the right. I had to flip the book upside down because it was the wrong way. So anyhow, we take the bottom ring, which is A, and it says it needs to be right there. So that's going to be right here where the arrow is and then right there. So we're going to take that ring, take the gap, and we're just going to slide it right over towards this area. And that looks good. doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, as long as it's in the right location. So that's that. Now B, we need to take the top one, which is right here, without turning the bottom one, and move it right there. So we're going to go to this valve. It looks like it's on this valve, and then this one's on the intake valve. So we got our intake valves, or no, take it back. We got our intake valves, which is a deeper one. It says IN right there. It stands for intake. And then you got your exhaust right here, which is the smaller ones. We got our B, top right intake. And we got our second ring over in the bottom corner. And now we need to take these two little C's. And the C's are going to be over here, right here. So we have top ring, second ring, and the two, actually take it back, the two little oiling rings at the very bottom, we're going to swing them over here. So they're going to be directly across from the compression ring. All right, so let's slide those around until we get to, here they are. It's kind of already set up the way it needs to be. See the space there? So I'm going to just swing that one right over to here. And that's it. We're all done. Now we're going to put the ring compressor on there, compress it down, and gently tap it down in the cylinder. I'll show you how to do that. Now when reinstalling the pistons back into the cylinder, you have to be very careful that these rod bolts don't ever hit the crank because it can scratch it and then it'll wreak havoc on your bearings later because the scratch will just tear into them. Uh, so pretty much this is what I do. I get a big screwdriver and I get a fuel hose from Advance. Because if you use regular hose, like bigger fuel hose, like this black stuff right here, it's too fat on the actual uh, rod bolts. And what happens is, is they end up uh, coming out a little further than the crank and you can't quite get the piston down on the crank and then you're just risking damage to the crank because you're trying to rip it back out and damage to the rings. So you want to go with this thinner stuff and there's a big difference. Look how fat that is compared to that. So that's what you're looking at. So it doesn't quite fit over the rod bolts right away. And this is a B-series, so if you have bigger rods, it's going to have bigger bolts, so you might have to get bigger fuel hose. Um, the size of this hose, I can't remember off the top of my head, three quarter maybe. Pretty much just fuel hose. Uh, the fattest one you can find, just kind of eyeball it. And I'll put it on there on the Phillips head. Big screwdriver. Um, this is a 3x6 screwdriver cobalt. And then I'll take a torch and a lighter. Let's turn it on. And I'll get it started. You have to get it started first because if you don't, it won't go on. It's too mushy. So you just go like this. You heat it. And just keep going around until you get it a little warm. You don't want to burn it. And now that it's warm and soft, you can push again and it goes goes up more and then you keep doing that until you get the length of the bolt and then once you get that you let it cool on the actual screwdriver itself and it'll stay that size and it'll be able to slip on and off a lot easier because if you just jam it on there you're gonna have a heck of a time pulling it off the rod bolts in underneath in the block another quick tip is when you're putting these lines on make sure they're facing outward because if it's facing in, they're going to kind of get caught on the crank. So you're going to slide them down over the crank journals like that. And then we're going to go straight down once we compress it. Now i got to clean it out and hone it. Now the first thing you need to do is just stuff a Walmart bag down in there all the way to the bottom. So it touches the crank. Because we're going to hone this cylinder and also make sure your crank is facing down not sticking up because you don't want the bottom of this hone scratching that crank or you'll be in big trouble so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the crank on the bottom and turn it away from uh, where we're working now you get up under here this one's uh, I think 19 millimeter 
You're going to put it on your crank pulley, and we're just going to turn it just till I, it's away from it. So the crank kind of goes down back into the block. I'm just going to use some two cycle engine oil since it's cheap stuff. Put a little bit on my hand and lubricate the cylinder walls. You don't want to do this dry because it'll take too much off. Just throw it on the brush. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to go up and down pattern. One, two, three, four. I'd suggest leaving a bag in there for sure in case anything snaps off, falls or whatever. So that's how I do mine. You can do yours however you feel, but I haven't had any problems with this. After I'm done with this, what I'm going to do is clean the cylinder wall up pretty nice. And then I'm going to spray some bright cleaner, carb cleaner all over that crank journal and clean it up really good and then lubricate the bearing with some engine oil or assembly lube and then I'm going to drop it down. Just take some carb choke cleaner and it, right down in there as you can see there's the crank journal and I just go in there and I aim it and I just clean it off really good and make sure to check on the bottom, spray it on the bottom and make it really clean before I install these bearings. Next step is to get some oil and a clean pan and fill up some oil in there because we're going to soak our rings and you're going to take some oil and actually put it on the bearing also and on the crank and on the cap the bearing where the uh, the cap where the bearing is so fill that up about halfway or whatever and go ahead and crucial to remember on the rod where the number is see that number now remember where that is because on the cap there's the other half of the number if I can get you to see it there we go there's the other half of the number right there so when you put it on the number has to meet if you get it backwards that's no good has to be lined up don't forget that so when I put it in there my arrow is going to be facing that way so that means that the number is facing towards the back of the block so when I put my cap on I remember that the number goes towards the back of the block because you're not going to be able to see it just goes in there like that tighten it up make sure it's clean so we're going to get our piston ring in here and there's really one way you want this facing up because you might have to adjust it one more time so we're going to get our piston facing the right way and we're going to put our rings over there and I like to leave the bottom of the lip on the rod or the piston down so it can lock into the cylinders with this little lip so you, you don't want to completely cover it or else you won't get it lined up right so now it's time to compress it and go slow don't go crazy because you want the rings to see inside and you don't want to spin the rings either so try to keep them exactly the way you clocked them so let's tighten it all right and another key is is try to get this lip lined up flush with each other there we go it just makes it a lot easier when you're trying to do it now get our piston lined up the arrow facing towards the timing belt make sure our number and we're gonna slide these down over the crank make sure that's all the way down Just give it a little tap on here just want this all the way down flush to the block all right we got that now we're going to tighten it one more time before we go hitting it yeah that's that last that last click you can't quite get it when you got it out of there so now we're gonna gently tap it down again it all the way down touching the crank now we go under there pull it down with those little hoses until we get it flush and then we put the end cap on with oil and torque it down this is underneath the engine and we're just gonna pull these two hoses off 
and it's right over the crank that's what we want and then we're going to put our cap on with the numbers facing towards the back of the block so that's what we want to do so if you guys are wondering that's exactly what you're looking for it's a little tight squeeze like I said at that last tap is because the rubber hoses were trying to go over the crank journal but that's better than the bolts trying to go over the crank journal or you'd be in big trouble.